Well, we have reached the end of our mini-series for our Sunday evening services. Um, this is the last of four. Um, and if you've missed any of them, you can um, go and catch up on them um, on the uh, church website at any time. But um, tonight we're going to be thinking a bit about eternal life. Um, so before I get into that, I'll just give you a little recap um, of some of the sermons from before, um, in case you've missed any of them. Um, we started out um, looking at being born, or being born again. Um, looking at the choice that we make in our lives to follow Jesus, and the transformation that that can have in each of our lives when we accept him. We were thinking about our testimonies, and how we met Jesus, and how that story could impact others, how that could support fellow Christians and encourage them, and how it could be one of the greatest stories that we can ever tell to those that we know that don't yet know Jesus. In our second week, we looked at growing up. We looked at the importance of the things that we consume. We looked at the influences that are around us in the world, whether it be from media, from other people, from books. And hopefully we had a chance to look at what influences us for good and what maybe isn't so healthy in our lives. And we also were able to consider the support that the church family can offer to each of us and how we can maybe serve in the church family as well. And uh, last week, Peter Clayton was here um, looking at maturity. Um, once we have started to grow uh, and we have reached a place of spiritual maturity, uh, we should stink of it. Um, I think he likened it to uh, stinking bishop cheese, um, being that if you're mature in your faith, people should be able to see it without you even having to say it, if you've got to that point. And in your spiritual maturity, we are able to have joy in all circumstances. Even in times of suffering, we can find the joy of the Lord. And in that space of maturity, we're in a position to be able to truly stand beside our fellow brothers and sisters and support one another. So tonight, as we come to an end, it's an end that I think is maybe more of a comma than a full stop in some ways. Our time here on earth will at some point come to an end. That's a fact. Um, I believe the saying is that uh, in life you can only be sure of two things and that those two things are death and taxes. Unfortunately, we won't be talking about taxes this evening. Um, but we can be sure that eventually our time here will come to an end. So what's next? Well, our passage tonight talks about eternal life. Um, specifically in verse 24, um, Matt, I don't know if you could get verse 24 up on the screen. That would be wonderful. Um, but in verse 24, um, it says, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death into life. So what is eternal life? Well, in the shortest possible of terms, um, it's to be with God for eternity. It's often been a place that is described um, as going home to be with our Heavenly Father. It's a place where we belong with God, where there are no more worries of this world, no more tears of this world, and we have ultimate freedom with God. It's a place that we should truly want to go. I don't know about you, but if you've ever gone away from home, maybe for the very first time, to a new and strange place where you don't really know anything and you've got to try and get on. The idea of going home, maybe to your family, around a lovely warm fire, to a place that is comfortable that you're protected and looked after, that's a really nice image. It's a place you desperately want to go back to sometimes. And maybe that's a little image of eternity with God. A place that we desperately should want to go to a place that is family, a place that is protection. In Matthew, in uh, chapter 6, verses 9 to 21, um, Jesus says this. He says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, 
and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. We have many things in this world. We're particularly fortunate in Jersey that we do have so much world, in terms of worldly possessions. And it can be quite easy to fall into the trap of thinking that I need the next, the next big thing, I need the next iPhone, I need the next um, material belonging. But God calls us to store up our, our treasures in heaven, not here on earth. If our heart is after Jesus, and if our heart is after God, then our heart is in the right place. Our heart is in the place for eternity rather than just in the place for now on earth. It's not that we don't get any reward in this life now. We can get a taste um, of all of that following coming to Jesus. But our treasures should be for us in heaven. How do we get eternal life? Is it something that we can just apply for? Um, is it something that we have to work to get? Now, I am somebody who is often very guilty of wanting to do things in my own strength um, and in my own ability. Um, I want to feel that I've earned something. I want to feel that I've deserved it. Um, I'm not very good at accepting free gifts, except for like pens and stuff, because they're always easy to get. Um, but I always feel like I, I owe something if I get something for free. So I, I always want to think I, I can do something to earn eternal life. But the reality is there is nothing that we can do to earn it. There is only one way to get to eternal life, and that is Jesus. Jesus says in, in John 14, verses 6 and 7, he says, um, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Jesus is the way to eternal life. He is the way home to the Father. Eternal life and forgiveness from our sins, the thing that cut us off from God, is a gift that is freely given to each of us. We cannot do anything more to earn it, and we can't do anything to lose it either. It's the ultimate showing of God's love. It's when Jesus came down to earth, lived amongst us, and died for us on the cross so that we had a way to be with God again. So to get eternal life, we need to accept Jesus. It comes back to the beginning of our series again. The accepting of Jesus and being born again. Because when we are born again, we go from death to life. Now, how can Jesus do this? How can Jesus come and uh, offer us this gift? Well, in our passage tonight, Jesus says that he, he comes and does as the Father does. He doesn't do anything separate from the Father. He is one with the Father. And in verse 22, it says that all authority has been given to him to judge. And so when it comes to standing before God, Jesus has already taken the judgment upon himself at the cross for us. Now, all of this doesn't mean that our actions are insignificant. It doesn't mean that they're not important. Our actions are a sign of a healthy and living relationship with Jesus, a living faith. For example, if you were to see a tree um, in a field as you drive past it, let's say, and that tree never grows, it doesn't produce any leaves, it doesn't produce any fruit, you would probably rightly assume that that tree is quite probably dead, that maybe its roots aren't in a very good place, it's not getting the nutrients and the food that it needs to grow. Can we sometimes be a bit like that tree? If our faith isn't in a good place, if we haven't got a living faith and a relationship with Jesus, we won't see any fruit. But if we're living a life with Jesus, if we love him and are going after him, there will be fruit. There will be actions. Our works 
that we see should be an outworking of our faith. Um, in James chapter 2 um, is the main passage of faith without works. It says this, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and be well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But some will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. He was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in different directions? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. So deeds will not get us eternal life, but they are some of the fruit that show that we have a living faith. If you know someone who is a Christian and they have no fruit, get in there, talk to them, help them, come alongside them, be the, be the gardener. Because if no one goes and tends to them, alone they will die. But together we can look after one another. So do we have a healthy and living faith? Because of Jesus, we are no longer judged. We have moved from death to life. If you have accepted Jesus into your life, you have moved from death to life. And in our role, in our mission to the world, we are called to go to, other, to places around the world, whether that be here, in your homes, in your work, in your friendship groups, um, or off this island, we are called to go and bring heaven to earth in the relationships we have and the people that we meet by living for Jesus in those places, by having that healthy relationship with God and by having a living faith that impacts the world. When we come to the end of our days here on earth, yes, it may be sad. Um, I've had the great privilege um, since I've been working at the church um, to be on the sound desk for many funerals that Paul has taken here. And despite the fact that a funeral is often a very sad occasion, when it's for somebody who you know had a relationship with Jesus, it is also such a celebration and such a moment, such a, a service of joy for the life they had and for the place that we know that they have gone to be. When we come to the end of our days here on earth, if we know Jesus, we do not need to have worry. But we can have joy and hope that we will be going home because of what Jesus has done for us. We can celebrate the lives of, uh, that we lived here on earth. We can celebrate the place to which we know that we are going. And if we know how great that place is, if we have experienced some of a relationship with Jesus here on earth, imagine how it will be when we get to heaven. If we know people who don't have the hope of Jesus in their lives, how important is it that we share our hope with them? It makes such a big difference in the end. It brings us great joy in this life. It doesn't necessarily make it easy, but in all circumstances we can have the joy of the Lord. And in the end, we can have eternal life with him. That's something that's worth sharing. That's something that's worth going out to the world and declaring the hope that we have in Jesus 
telling people what he did on the cross for each of us. May our confidence be found not in what we have done, but in what God has done for each of us. So my question to us as we, uh, as we end this evening is, where are you in your spiritual life cycle? Have you been born again? Have you invited Jesus into your life? If you have, have you ever shared that story, that testimony, with somebody else? If you haven't, I would encourage you to do so. If it's somebody here, it can really encourage another Christian. If it's somebody you know who is not a Christian um, at work, maybe you'll have the opportunity to share it with them. It doesn't need to be long. It doesn't need to have all the action sequences and explosions that a movie would have. It's your story, your personal story of meeting with Jesus. And there's nothing more powerful than that story to somebody who doesn't believe. Have you started to grow in your faith and in your spiritual life? Have you figured out how to? Have you figured out what it is that you need to grow? Maybe you need more mature Christians around you. Maybe you need some guidance in, in good Bible reading or in how to pray. Have you got to the stage where you've got a mature relationship with God and a mature faith? Where you now feel you're in a position that you want to serve others? Whether you can draw alongside them as a friend, as a mentor, or by serving in ministries um, in the church. There's plenty of opportunities to do that here. Um, and if you'd like to get involved in any of those, please do come and talk to any of, the, any of the team at any point. We'd be really happy to help get you involved. We're all a big family. There are those that are growing. There are those that are helping out. Um, and we're all going together. Uh, do you have the confidence and a hope in Jesus for eternal life with him? And have you told anybody else about it? As we finish this evening, may I, may I pray for us? Jesus, we thank you for what you have done for each of us and for the hope that we can have in you. We ask now that you would show us where on the spiritual journey we are and highlight to each of us where we need to continue to grow and where we can be sharing with others. May we, as we go out from this place tonight, go out with joy, knowing the hope that we have in you, that someday we get to come home and spend eternity with you, but knowing that in the meantime, we have the wonderful privilege and joy of sharing that message and sharing that hope with those around us. Pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.